I've got my office darkened right now to show you this week's project, which is this, uh, I guess you call it a shadow box. It extends out from the wall and it's got a mirror in the back. But the reason why I have the office darkened is because I also have a light on here that shines in. So, you know, it's kind of a cool little project. I made mine out of zebra wood, which really pops on there. But I didn't need very much zebra wood because the whole project is really just made out of MDF. On my last video, I received, well, a lot of comments from people who, <laughs> who didn't like the music. <laughs> and, well, actually, whenever I post a video and have music on there, there's always going to be people who don't like that particular song or that particular type of music. So, you know, I listen to my comments from people, and so I don't listen to my comments. No, I listen to your comments. <laughs> <laughs> and so I decided on this one to, I still want to use music because it kind of moves things along quick and you don't have to listen to me yammering on all the time, kind of like I'm doing right now. So in this video, I decided to have music that should appeal to everyone because, well, it's all different kinds of music. It'll be something in there for you. If you're independently wealthy and like to use exotic woods for your projects, Go with solid wood. That's the way to go <laughs> because it's a lot easier. But if you're not independently wealthy, like me, and you get a board. Okay, this is a board. It's a zebra wood. My wife got this for me for my birthday. And it's 24 inches long, 3 quarters of an inch thick. But the way to maximize that is to resaw it down into thinner boards and use them as a veneer. If I resaw this into three pieces, I'll effectively have six feet of wood. Normally, after I resaw boards down and I have those little bandsaw marks on there, I just run it through my thickness planer and it smooths it all out. On highly figured woods, like zebra wood and probably some other woods, I usually just sand it down smooth because sometimes running it through the planer, some of that grain will just snap right out of there. I've cut out four pieces of half inch MDF and a piece of quarter inch MDF. This is going to be the back of the shadow box. So, you know, these are just going to get glued together something like this. Now, I've also cut another piece of quarter inch MDF that's going to go on the top. And this is going to hold a light. This is what I'm going to use for the light. It's called a stick and click. And it contains three AAA batteries. And it has this little adhesive strip on the back, which I removed. I won't be needing it for this project. And I picked up a package of three of these at the hardware store and it was, you know, it was like $12. And the best thing about this is that <laughs> it's been seen on TV. Always base all of your buying decisions on the fact that it was seen on TV. So I cut that hole in this top piece and that'll be what this light will shine through so that when it's on that and you push down on it, it'll turn on. And this side I just rounded over just to kind of give it a more pleasing look. I don't know if you'll really see it inside, but I just didn't want those harsh edges. So here's the idea. This will be the front of the box and then the light will sit on like that and then this top piece will cover it up like that. I need to put a hole in here to turn it on and off. And one thing I didn't really figure very well was that that doesn't stay on <laughs> when I did that. I probably could have made that hole a little bit smaller. Uh, I was hoping on the curvature of this lens to, you know, work that way. So what I'm going to do is just epoxy down this, uh, this metal grommet. It's just kind of like a washer that I found in my shop. And that will let it work out fine. Let me show you a couple of things I've done is I glued on a thin strip on this front and that will stop the light uh, at right where it needs to be when it goes in. 
And on the back, what I've done is I glued in a couple of strips here just to keep the light aligned. So you can see that when it goes in now, it'll stop right where it needs to go. And then, you know, of course I can just turn it on like that. And one more thing you probably will notice is that I've removed this back panel off of this light fixture only because, well, I made this too shallow and it, <laughs> it wasn't fitting in there right. But hey, now it works out great. <laughs> Now I can get back to the frame, that zebra wood. And what I've done is I glued on strips onto the insides of each of these. And the outsides, I've actually cut the strips and I think I'm gonna glue those on after I assemble this. It'll be a lot easier to clamp it together rather than try to clamp on these edges. So right now I'm just going to glue this on up. The shadow box is complete with that mirror epoxied in there and the insides and the outsides all painted black. I've gone ahead and finished up this frame and what I did is I applied those strips to the outside of the frame and they look pretty good. You don't really notice them because the wood is so highly figured. So now all I need to do is, well, I'll lacquer the frame and then I'll glue it on up. the completed shadow box mounted on my wall. One thing I was reading on the package of those lights is that three AAA batteries will last you for about a thousand hours on that light. It's just a little LED light so it doesn't take a lot of power. So that's a good thing and of course it's really easy to change that out of there also. And it's surprisingly bright when it's not daylight like it is now. <laughs> this thing really shines so I'm pretty happy with the way that turned out. Thanks for watching this video and I, I hope you enjoyed the music. <laughs> I'll talk to you later.